Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Episode 67 of Survival of the Fitted. I'm not going to talk too long, but I have a new nickname this week. Hashtag Mustache Joe for those who mustache the question. Joe has a mustache on his face. That was a lot of syllables, but either way, we got a few really special guests. They're part of the League Fits panel for the all League Fits teams. So we're just going to break down their analysis and run those interviews right about now. So I'm going to get out of your hair and we're going to proceed to the League Fits interviews right now. I'm here with someone that kind of does it all and was probably the, the person I trusted the most to be on this panel. I'm going to just let you introduce yourself. What's up, man? Appreciate you. Uh, Devon, aka Brooklyn, stylist and designer. Brand Veil Lies, everybody, if you heard of it. If not, I do a little everything, you know, but I appreciate yeah. you guys having me on here. Uh, valuing my opinion as well. Hell yeah, bro. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I appreciate, I appreciate that. So first, um, I'm just going to like run through your team super quickly, and then we'll just kind of talk about your team, the actual teams, and you know, yeah. get to it. So okay. you had Josh Christopher for your Rookie of the Year. Yes. Jordan Clarkson for MVP. Your first team was Karis LeVert, Jason Tatum, Jordan Clarkson, Kuz, and PJ Tucker. Second team was Chris Paul, D Book, Kelly Oubre, SGA, Terry Rozier. Mm -hmm. Third team was D'Angelo Russell, James Harden, Jalen Brown, who's super underrated, Russell Westbrook, and Tristan Thompson. Um, yeah, just talk me through your team a little bit. Um, okay, so let's go with the first team. Jordan Clarkson. Yeah. Unanimous. He could, he, he could win MVP every year, right? Yes, like he, every every like, year. Yeah. Unanimous. He, he's like Giannis, like on, on the court. <laughs> like every year, technically, he could or like LeBron, yeah. like 2010 through like 2018. Like, yeah, like he could he could win MVP exactly. every year. Consistently, Jordan Clarkson, he he got it. Hats off to him. That's the best dress. He's gonna be the best dress for years to come. Mm -hmm. Got his mm -hmm. own style, versatile. He always putting on something. So Jordan Clarkson, that's number one. He got that. Um, this year, and we spoke about this. Heavily. I had Jordan and Karis neck to neck this year. Yeah. Karis really? I had I had Karis, you know, Karis is one of my guys. No bias though, but I think Karis was one of the best dressed this year. But Me too. due to his injury and being traded, he kind of took some time off. But that's why I took Jordan number one because of consistency. Like he yeah. did it all year round. But I think if Karis was to be on it all year round, he would he would have had it this year. He's, he had a strong start. He's um, a he's a big sleeper pick, I think, for like yeah, MVP yeah, next year for yeah, sure. Because yeah. I had him on my first team. He cooled down a little bit with the injury mm -hmm. and the trade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think he ended up just Joe and I did our ballot together. So I think he mm -hmm. ended up at like the top of our second team. But okay, he's okay. definitely an MVP sleeper for us next year. Like yeah, next next people year people sleep on him crazy. I'm just telling you right I now, was, yeah. Yeah, I was sleep on him and Ian put me on. I was like, I, I had did. no idea. I, about I did. Yeah. I did put the young boy. Yeah. That's right. Yo, I didn't even yo, know. Pay attention, Karis. He he really he Karis really, Levert. Yeah, Karis there you go. definitely next year. He's he, he he's gonna get that next year. First team for sure. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's definitely gonna get that. Um, I also had who I had. Oh, PJ Tucker. Yeah. PJ Tucker is always going. No, he's mm -hmm. always gonna be top in the league as far as fits, no matter what. Um, we love we love PJ Run. I love PJ yeah. actually went to my high school, so I love. Oh yeah, PJ. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. But um, we I think the reason he dropped a little bit this year is just because there wasn't as many pictures of him. That's like the Miami, told, Heat, yeah, yeah. Yeah. the Miami Heat, yeah, the Miami Heat. If you, just don't if you go to pictures. his page, you might you better off following his page because yeah, his page sure. is like PJ always is going to be within that top three. I'm going to say top three to four, yeah. but it's always like he's going he's going to remind us like I can still do this if I want to. Right, like for sure. Going, yeah. yeah, he's always gonna pop out with something like, "Yeah, just to let y'all know I'm still here." But PJ is always mm -hmm. gonna be up there. I, I believe in PJ. I hear um, that. Who else? I got Kuzma. You know, yeah. shout out to my brother Torino. He did a. That's my guy. Yeah, immaculate job this year. Um, every, his work with Kuzma, their personal style, like the way they work together, is just like they they. Yeah. I, I think that he was very consistent as well. So I had him mm -hmm. in my, um my top three. Yeah, there's no one like can I don't think there's anyone in the league that's like as consistently like putting on like high fashion pieces as yes, Kuzma too. Yes, like yep. Kuzma mm -hmm. putting on like fashion week outfits yes, like two yes, in the yep, tunnel. Exactly. And I don't think there's like all these guys are wearing like Balenciaga sweaters and shit like that. Mm -hmm. But this is like this dude's out here wearing like runway pieces in exactly. the tunnel. Like, that's, that's that's, that's mm -hmm. different. Torino, Torino always takes he takes chances, and mm -hmm. I feel like with Kuzma it fit perfectly because Kuzma's a risk taker as well. 
And yeah. it just actually, it went, it went perfectly. So I took them as far as consistency, I took that. And then I had JT as far as consistency as well. He's, yeah. he's the only one I feel like gets dressed every single day. And yeah, I took all him full 82. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I took him as, as, as that as well. Consistency is huge, bro. It's 82 right. games, man. Right. Like, exactly. I, I don't even get dressed up that much. Like, you know what I, mean? I don't even have that many. I don't think right. I have that many outfits as well. <laughs> so, like, that's really, that's really, really different. I want to bring up a point you brought on Kuzo is that, like, he's always taking risks. Yeah. That's something I'll, like, give extra points for, like, when I'm yeah. voting. Is yeah. even if I don't fuck with all of your outfits, because, like, you know, there are some Kuz outfits, like, I didn't, who else takes risks? Like, Kuz, Russell Westbrook, yeah, even yeah. Harden. Like, there's going to be outfits where I'm like, nah, that's not really yeah. my speed. Yeah, 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 but I'll yeah, give yeah. you points for taking risks. I'd rather yeah. you take the no risk, exactly. not like every single one, than, like, be, like, everything is, like, a cool 6.5 out of 10 to me. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Oh, exactly. Like, I, I like I like that more. Exactly. Um, second team. Who I got for second team? I got some questions for the second it, team. We'll let you run through it, but I got some questions for the second team. Got some questions. Oh, right. You yeah. gonna get grilled by the young buck? <laughs> yeah, Let's I go. Got some let let, let me. me see. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna answer. So second team, I got yeah. CP. I got book. I got Kelly Oubre. Mm -hmm. I have Shy, and I have Terry Rozier. Honestly, I might. Change. Hmm. I, I want to change Terry Rozier. I just spoke to Ian yeah. early. I want to change Terry Rozier because there was a couple people that y'all put on the um to put on the page that I kind of it kind of slipped my mind. Yeah, there's so, so many names, dude. Yeah, there, there was so many. So yeah. I couldn't. I wasn't really keeping up, but it was so coming. In, so I would I would I would take Terry Rozier out, and I would put Frank Jackson. I would put Frank. Jackson. Frank there we is go. Like I like that. that. I like Frank. That. I, would, I like that. I would put Frank. I would put Frank Jackson. Very if, clean cut. I love so his style. Clean. Very clean, and he has his own style. He's clean. Yeah. If Frank I Jackson. could have anyone's wardrobe, like if I could just like rob someone's closet, it's probably Frank's. <laughs> Frank, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Frank, is, Frank is clean. I like yeah. I, I, I like Frank's style. So I would switch him with uh Terry Rosier. I think that's valid. That's valid for sure. I, I well, last that. minute trades going on. I like it. I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I, gotta, I had to. I had to I do a little switch switch out. But so I had a that. yeah. You know I had a quick question. Right. So. This seems to be the year of like Devin Booker and whatnot, and everybody is saying he's like the best dress or whatever. What made you put Book on the second team and not the first team? Because I feel like he's like the fan favorite who like kind of ran away with I, it this year. I, I see that. Okay, so my thing with Book is Book. I, I, lo I love Book style. Book has a tough style. Like I like I like Book style. Mm -hmm. Um, my thing is Book style. Book is specific to his one style, so it, mm -hmm. everything is clean cut. Yes, it's clean. But I'm looking for I like versatility. Me too. Yeah, I like I, I like versatility. So people is I mean, no disrespect to book his style. That's his style. He found his style. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and he's he, he's great at it. But when I look at like people on the first team, I like people that, that has versatility that can throw on the clean cut outfits and then throw some swag, uh streetwear, some swag right. and mm -hmm. things like that. Like I haven't really seen book step into the streetwear kind of realm. To show me that, all right, you know, I can do this and do that, but don't get yeah. me wrong, there's nothing wrong with his style. But that's why I have him on the second team. His second team is still hard. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's still team. amazing. Yeah, the Instagram team. comments this week act like second team is the worst place in the world. I'm like, bro, there's 450 hey, players and you top yeah. ten. That's hard as hell. Second team is not second team is not bad, but that 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 yeah. is just my thing with book though. Like, I I would like to see like more. I, I want to see what else he can do. You feel me? Yeah, like, I feel that. clean cut. You always, you always get a pass with clean cut because it's like there's nothing that you can say mm -hmm. about it. So if you just keep going clean cut. There's no room to pretty much critique. Yeah, I would have liked to see him miss on a few outfits. Yeah, he but shot no, eighty two layups. <laughs> that yeah, would have been cool. Yeah, we don't like. That's what I'm saying. We don't want to see. What well, at least, yeah. like you said, take a risk. At least try it. That's probably not Devin yeah. Book style, but right. I, 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 I like, but that, that's the reason why I put him on the second team, Joe. Honestly, yeah. And the Devin cool thing about book, I like him as a person as well, because he won. I'm sure you saw. I sent you over before. Like he won yeah. the MVP. Yeah, MVP. Yeah, um, yeah. I think like he obviously wasn't like the best. Like like Devin Booker didn't dress better than Kyle Kuzma this year. You know what I mean? But like the cool thing about him was that like he like developed like this like super distinct viral aesthetic yes. that just like hit really hard on the internet yes. this year because it was yes. so defined and niche yes. and like mm -hmm. next year is we're already at the point like as you know joe and i look at all like the numbers for like yeah, 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 yeah. things like that and like people are already like 
like the book used to be like a walking 50,000 likes. Yeah, it's yeah. not necessarily like that anymore, but like this was like the D book year, even if he wasn't, yeah. he, he obviously, he didn't dress better than Karis or Jordan Clarkson or Kuz yeah. or mm-hmm. PJ or Kelly Oubre, or even like D'Angelo Russell was actually Joe and his MVP pick. That was surrounding it. It's like, you, yeah. had, you had to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Like his outfits, We Joe and I always talk about this, but like his outfits mm. looked like his car and his car looked like his girlfriend exactly. and his girlfriend like looked like whole, his Instagram photos. Yeah, photos. the whole swag with it, like D book yeah. has, has the swag, but that was just my thing. Like, it's like when you're just clean, there's nothing wrong with it. Like, let yeah. me clarify that. When you're just clean cut. It's a uniform. Yeah, exactly. There's no room to critique. It's just like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, that's clean. And then the next one, come on. Oh yeah, that's clean. Yeah. And it's going to keep going. Oh yeah, that's clean. <laughs> it's yeah. like exactly. It's, it's, I, don't, I, don't I know. hope he takes some rest a little bit next yeah, year. I'd yeah, love to yeah. see him take some rest. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And Devin, I feel and like I, he could do that. Yeah. Exactly. And I wanted to piggyback on what Ian said too, and extend the question to you. Yeah, Did yeah. you? Because Ian was talking about the whole car matches the girlfriend, girlfriend matches the crib, crib matches the outfit. Do yeah. you look at strictly outfits when you were making your team, or were you on some like? You know what I mean? Did you take into consideration like lifestyle and that whole thing too, or was it just yeah, strictly I, what you did in the time? No, 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 no. I take I take in um, consideration lifestyle. Like one thing about Jordan Clarkson, I feel like he fits his outfits. Like that's his swag. Mm-hmm. It's him. He's a rock star. Exactly. Like he has the whole swag with it. Like the whole ensemble. Yeah. It, it goes with him. It's just he like, can wear he can wear like the supreme jacket that says like "fuck you" all over it, and yeah. he doesn't look like a poser. Hey, like exactly. that's like yeah. his, that's like, his yo, vibe. I can tell. I can tell he really does this. On a day to day, and it's just, yeah. it was just a lot of outfits. It's like, yeah, he got that rock star um mentality. Like he had like the uh the black wag pants with the Rick Owens, the, uh, yeah. the, the, the 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 uh like the rock tee, and it just looked like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, he does this like yeah. and he looked like a rock star. So I, I I take all of that into um into account, and like the same thing with Karis. Like with Karis outfits, it's just like. Yeah, Karis is he he he's really doing this like, and it doesn't I, look like they're trying too hard. Exactly. That's a big that's a big or, thing Joe and exactly. I talk about or, like or following mm-hmm. a blueprint. You know, people yeah, like you know, as far as men's dressing, there's like a blueprint. Like you could just do this, do this, do this, and it's mm-hmm. just like all right, it has to be good. No, you could tell like this is their personal style. This is what they do. Yeah, and it actually fits what they do. So yeah, I look at and it um, feels natural. Yeah. yeah, it feels natural, organic. It feels organic. Because there's a lot of dudes in the league that put like put shit on, and you can tell like a stylist put that shit on, and like that's not something they would have like picked themselves. Exactly, and that's it's it's very easy to distinct that, you know. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Like those those people that I picked is just like all right, you can tell that they're not following a trend or a blueprint, or just like all right, I'm gonna do this and this because I see everybody likes this, so everybody's gonna automatically like it on me. No, I can see that they really do this. Like it's it's organic, basically. Yeah, they're dressing for themselves. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. the biggest thing I take into consideration too is like the whole being true to yourself and if it's natural. Because I understand this is like we talk about this too. Super unconventional. It's like a two minute walk to the locker room. It's whatever. Mm-hmm. It's a tunnel. Mm-hmm. It's a catwalk. It's a runway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like to think I get it. Like you dress up for those situations, but I would like to think like Jordan Clarkson wears seventy five percent of the outfits that he wears in the tunnel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if he, he wasn't does. in the, you know what I mean, and he, he does. does, and I, I he I wears his tunnel outfits when he's not in the tunnel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's like I, I, I know that like as a fact. And yeah. let, let, let me use a um prime example real quick. So during Fashion Week, you seen how uh him and Russell Westbrook dressed for the uh Don Brown show. And yeah, they, they wore the, the kilts. Uh, the kilts. Yeah, they wore the kilts. Now. Mm-hmm. It looked better on Jordan Clarkson because it felt like Yeah, of course it did. <laughs> like, yo, it's just like the whole swag and demeanor around it was just like, yeah, that yeah. fits Jordan better because that's just like it, it felt like organic. You feel me? And he mm-hmm. because it wasn't a trend. Don't forget Jordan Clarkson when he was on the Lakers, which de- feels like a billion years ago. Remember, mm-hmm. he wore the kilt, yeah, like because now it's gone. it's a it's a trend at this point yeah. now. Like yeah, it, it's yeah, a yeah. trend. Um, he did it and they were like, Why you wear the kilt? And he was like, Hey, swag, baby. That was like or like the first like viral league fits hey, moments hey, back in the yeah, day. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, so he's like been owning that. that it, it wasn't like him following like the trend. You know what I mean? Like exactly. he's been on that. Like, he was like, you look at it, you look at it, both of them, you just like, yeah, that's how it's done. We could tell that he, he he's done this before. Yeah. yeah. So okay. Yeah, that, that goes in the world. Third team. Oh. Well, Joe and I, Joe and I had D'Lo as our MVP. So we got a bone to pick. Yeah, had oh, you got deal on the third team? Oh, yeah, we got to talk we, about that. We, yeah, we, <laughs> you, you can run through your list, though. Run I through had your list. him as the MVP? Hell yeah, yeah bro. Uh, Honestly, it could have been Jordan, but, like, Jordan can win every year. Yeah, like, Jordan JC's, can win yeah. Okay, year. so it, I want you to explain to me why y'all had D-Lo as MVP, and then I will go 
and tell you my difference with with D'Lo. Joe talks me into Andy. it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go, Joe. Yeah. You talk to me. Into so, so what I, what I, what I why I really appreciate about mm-hmm. D'Angelo's fits. There's two people in the league that I feel dress the most unique. One of them is James Johnson. The other one is D'Angelo Russell. I'm yeah, not James a fan Johnson of James sure. Johnson. Yeah, James Johnson is one of the most unique players in the NBA. I'm not a fan of James Johnson's fits, but I can like appreciate the fact that there's yeah. like a certain sense of like uniqueness okay. that comes that with sense. it. I just feel like I say all that to say, D'Lo dresses unique and it like like he's taking crazy shots and they're going in. And I'm like, man, I applaud the fact. Also, there's a bias. He's my favorite player. But outside of that, I'm like, yo, like I actually do appreciate that. I had to add that little piece in the end. You know, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, is it something to be said for it? Okay, okay. Yeah, I think D'Lo is oh. pretty underrated, man. Like he could, he's another guy that could switch between like streetwear, but then can also like dress like a cool substitute teacher. And I fuck with that. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe yeah. I haven't seen enough of D'Lo. There wasn't yeah. a ton of pictures of exactly. D'Lo. I will say that. Oh, I only, wasn't I'm your fault. Seeing, wasn't your fault. Like, like I said, almost kind of the same thing as Devin Booker. I'm only seeing one side of D'Lo. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing like the outfits he are put, he is putting together is very unique and his swag and is very clean cut as well. Yeah. So maybe I'm only seeing that side. So maybe I need to open up my eyes to D'Lo more, and I have to see more from D'Lo. But that's why it didn't just cross my mind to throw him on my like mm-hmm. my first and second is because I seen a clean cut shirt, open hat. Mm-hmm. Uh, trousers, Doc Martens, low yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just seeing that. So maybe I need to just see more of D'Lo, and I'll definitely open my eyes to it. But that's only because I was only seeing one side of him. Mm-hmm. Right. I but hear not, that. I hear D-Lo, that. Yeah, I, D'Lo style is definitely unique, and it's, it, it's tough, too, as well. Again, you had him on, on, the, on the third team. People acting yeah. like the third team is the worst third team in the world. <laughs> third team is very, very, very tough. Like, all, yeah. all, all, the, all these teams are, so fault, intercha- are, are like, super interchangeable. Yeah, I mean, that was – that was. You that know was, what I was, mean? Like, there's guys on the third team that deserve to be on the first team and vice versa, like, all around on everyone's teams. Yeah. Except for there's some people have some bad votes, but <laughs> you, you got it. <laughs> yeah, so that was, that was why, though. I apologize for that, though. I'm, I'm, I'm going to look out for you, though, Joe. I don't no, yeah, you good, my you eye good. out for D-Lo. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Joe, Joe tries Say, to dress hey. like D-Lo. No, I try to dress like Book and D-Lo. But like I say, let's say, same way that... Ian put me on cares. I'm gonna put you on D Lo. It's all okay, good. All right, all right. Look that's, in the that's, direction. A, that's a fair that's trade. For that's sure. a fair trade. Each one yeah. teach one. Each one teach one. Wait, I, I gotta make one more Karis comment real quick. Uh, uh, because you know I work with Miles on the Pacers. Yeah. When they traded Karis, like, I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. I was like, oh, thank God, bro. I was like, Got him out of there. I was like finally, Got him out of there. I was like, Miles You've been having can internal battles. <laughs> bro, I was like, finally, Miles can be the best dressed dude on this team, bro. I was like, thank That's goodness. Hard. I'm not even going to lie to you. I used to send Ian pictures of uh, Karis. I'm like, Ian, look at this. He's like, damn, I just put Miles in some shit too. That's crazy. He's like, oh, uh, not even the best dress in the tunnel. That's tough. Bro. I was like, oh, man, like, I was like, man, you like paying me. You got to be the best dressed on the yeah, team. And then nah, turning nah. Karis, I was like, exhale. Oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah, like um, your flowers, though, are as well, Ian. You did a great job with um, Miles and uh, Thanks, bro. Nassis as well. Appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, I hope they appreciate you and what you have done for them as well. You know, I was in a similar situation. We spoke about that. But yeah. you, did, you, did, you did your thing with them, man. You did your thing with them. Appreciate that, bro. Appreciate yeah, that. Who else I had on this team? Uh, I want to skip over to Tristan Thompson. I think you and I were like the only people that had Tristan Thompson on our teams. Yeah. Um, Bro, Tristan can dress. Yes. Uh, he's not as consistent. Like he's, he's not all, as like he's, he's, not he's, as a, he's a tech fleece guy here and there. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. He's not as consistent. But mm-hmm. some of the outfits that he put together, I think it was just kind of this was beginning. This is way beginning of the year. I haven't seen yeah. Tristan going through the second half. But it's beginning. Like it's some outfits is like. He he knows what he's doing. It's just gonna take yeah. a little, it's just gonna take a little more time and effort. But he's around. It's, it's either he's learning. Well, Tristan always time. knows what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe he does. <laughs> it's, it's, it's some outfits that he put together that I was just like, oh, all right, Tristan, that's not mm-hmm. that's not bad on, on certain lines. Like that's not bad. Yeah. But um, yeah. I feel like for if me, <laughs> if we see a little more Tristan. Yeah, and we'll get it. But he would mm-hmm. always go hard. Like 
his first like few outfits with the new yes. team. Yes. But he played for three teams this year, so he ended up getting like like exactly. ten like, crazy exactly. fire outfits off. Oh, he, Indiana, he did, he did catch, Sack, yeah. and Chicago, I think. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. The the Rick outfit he wore like his first game in Chicago is one of my favorite outfits this season. Yeah. You know which exactly. one I'm talking about? It was like the vest with like yes, Ramones. Yes. That's what I'm saying. He that was caught, a fire outfit. It was he, composed. He a few outfits. Yeah, yeah. But I had to add um, I y'all had him as um honorable mention. What's his name? Yeah. Uh, Nick Nickel, uh, Nikhil, oh, Nikhil, Nikhil. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I slept on him a little bit. He's he's tough. He's, he's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, mm-hmm. I slept I, I slept on him a little bit. So he's like, not super versatile. Like you know, yeah. it's like the flannels and like yeah, the NASCAR yeah, tees yeah. and like the really cool pants. But, but he's tough with it, and he's yeah, consistent. He, 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 he caught some stuff that I looked like. I was like, oh shit, I was mm-hmm. sleep. That's 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 actually yeah. calm. So I'll I'll put him. I'll move him in my third team actually, and take yeah. Russ out. Russ gotta go. Ooh. Oh, Russell Ooh. Westbrook's gone. I love you these last minute changes. You gonna, yeah, you gonna make a lot of people mad with that. I speak, know, but... speak on the Russ change. Okay, wait. Before you speak on Russ, like, would you have had Russ on a team like the past few years? Like, was there something different this year? Or you've just never I, been a fan. I, 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 I would, question. I would have, I would have Russ on um some teams in the past. But my thing with Russ yeah. is, it's like Russ would get everything right, but then it'd come down to the shoes. And he'll always do something different. He'll have mm-hmm. no laces or the uh, the flap hanging out. It's just like I think Russ was one of those first superstars that was was dressing. So to everyone, it was just like he was the biggest name that was dressing. Yeah. So it was just like oh, first thing we think of best dressed in the NBA. Yeah. Russell Westbrook because he, he was a dude. superstar and yeah. he was dressing because exactly. there were certain was, dudes that dressed in like 2016 yeah. was like he Nick Young like Russ was yeah. an actual all star you know what but I mean none of those other like, guys were all stars. When you say a casual fan, they yeah. automatically think Russell Westbrook because he was the right. biggest name that was dressing. But Russell Westbrook, I think, is 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 kind of hit or miss. Mm-hmm. I think I, I think I think he's hit or miss. I'm not really too much of a uh, I feel a, that a, a fan of his outfits. It's, it's hit or miss, and then sometimes it's just. He just he he. It's this. This is my opinion as well. But mm-hmm. he right. just he just does too much sometimes. Like mm-hmm. sometimes he so, just and then it's just he'll just throw brand on brand on brand on brand, and that's it's nah. It's just it's it's a little too much. I didn't even want to get into all of that, but that's just me. Now I hear okay. that and shit. You probably still got him in your top thirty though. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no he 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 could be the he could be my honorable mention. Yeah for sure. Facts. My honorable mention, but I would I would probably take him out though. I hear honest. that. I hear that. <laughs> Um, Josh Christopher was your rookie of the year. I he almost lost it based on the really? fan vote. He almost lost it. I thought it wasn't even close. I thought yeah, Josh I think, Christopher was that guy. Yeah, I think yeah, mm-hmm. he caught, he caught enough to solidify himself as that because rookie of the year. Jalen Green, Jalen Green was the guy who almost won it. They're ironically yeah, teammates. Jalen Green is so cool because Joe actually touched on this earlier. Some people is like to vote for like the cool guys. Like Jordan Poole got a ton of votes. I'm not sure yeah, he actually yeah. or Josh Giddy started to get a ton of votes. I'm like, he don't really put on no outfits. Like, <laughs> yeah. just, he's just I like a cool ass. No, like, I'm not right. thinking about no, I didn't think about Josh. No, Giddey. he's just like a like a cool ass dude. You know yeah, what I exactly. mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. so yeah, exactly. Josh Christopher Loki almost lost it. But if you like actually just like log on to Getty Image dot com and you type and just, Josh Christopher arrives, yeah, it's, it's look, just not even close. Like, and like like I said, he had the swag swag with his as well. Mm-hmm. Jalen yeah. Jalen Jalen's one of my mans as well. He 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 was cool, yeah. but I felt like Josh put on more fits. It was also consistent. Yeah, it was consistent. It was definitely yeah. consistent. Jalen yeah. Green like it's nice because when he takes like days off, it's not like the tech suit. It's like the explore page drip. It's like yeah, graphic yeah. tee and shorts yeah, 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 and, yeah, yeah. and like exactly. chucks or something. It's but, so, like he's still putting something on, but like exactly, yeah, you, you yeah. know, it's still they both, a day they, off. they both had the swag though as well. So Jalen, um, mm-hmm. Jalen got the Jalen has the potential. Yeah, definitely. They, 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 they his draft like, his draft suit was crazy. Yeah, that was they, one of the best draft exactly, suits ever. Like top have, three. They have the characters to go with mm-hmm. it. So all you gotta do is they get with the right person, they'll they'll yeah. they'll be good. They'll be good. <laughs> Jalen made the third team, right? Unless I'm mistaken, right? Did he make the third yeah, team? Yeah, yeah. yeah was, ironically, yeah. Jalen yeah. made he was the only rookie to make a league fits team, but he didn't win rookie of the year. Um, which is fine because I, I think that was Josh's to have anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Cause the, the fans voted Jalen for rookie of the year and then the mm-hmm. panel and then me and Joe put Josh. So we ended up getting like two yeah, or three yeah, votes yeah. or okay. whatever. Um, you had SGA before, before we head out, you had SGA on your second team. And as someone that was like 
publicly ostracized last year for having him on my second team. I just want to hear yeah, your thoughts. I'm, I'm glad you 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 took that risk. Like yeah. again, respect as Jay. Right, is my still man. top ten. Yeah, yeah. That's Jay is my man, but some of it 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 just it just it, it just got repetitive. Yeah, some, some, some that's of, what I say too. That's yeah. what I say too. Some the, there's no some, else. Yeah, yeah, there's no. But some some of it got repetitive. But he did catch a couple fits this year as well. I'm not yeah. going to lie. He it. started switching up a little bit yeah, more this started, year. Yeah. He started, yeah, this like, year. it wasn't always, like, the flannels and, like, mm-hmm. murder bravado mm-hmm. jeans every single game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, exactly. like, you know, like, he had the... Fuck, well, Among Us I, little vibe. Yeah, the... the, the, the <sighs> I, I'm blanking on the brand. But he mm-hmm. had, like, the Among Us thing. Where yeah, it was, like, entire, the, entire studios, yeah. Yeah, there you go. That, that, that. that yeah, those, those was clean. And then he had, like, yeah. a... Uh, 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 he had like a denim set on this year that was that was actually tough as well. Oh, yeah. I know you're talking about. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I feel so, like next year, next year is gonna be like the Shea like year that he's gunning for MVP. Like he, Karis, and obviously Jordan because every yeah, year Jordan. Yeah, yeah I say yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that was that was the reason. But just out of um respect of what he did and what he was doing, mm-hmm. that's why I just you know slid him down to the second team. Like yeah, but everybody else that mm-hmm. was that was in, on my first team as well. Like I like I said, it was just. It was like yeah. a lot of versatility, just versatility. Shit. And Shay's like 22 or something like that. Like yeah, 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 yeah. The moon, the sky is, you know, exactly. or whatever. That's why, yeah, that's why I'm... I'm what did Michael Jordan say? The, the ceiling is the roof. roof. The ceiling is <laughs> the roof. <laughs> the ceiling is the roof, guys. The ceiling yeah, is the that, roof. That, that's why okay. I had that CA on that, um, on that second team. Respect, bro. For sure. Um, well, it. yo, I just wanted to say, like, thank you so much for being a part of the okay. panel. Like, we next year we running mm-hmm. it back. Like, yeah, 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 definitely. And it was so awesome, like, hearing like the reasoning, especially behind someone who's like fashion opinions. Like, I really do respect. So, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Hopefully, everybody else respect my fashion opinion. I think. <laughs> I promise you they won't. I, mean, I know. I they, promise they, you they won't. <laughs> they they gonna be upset, but as long as the real ones yeah. know what I do in this game, and that's all that matters. Opinion, we know. We know. Best. That's it. that's all yeah. that matters. But I appreciate sure. you guys, you know, as well. Like, yeah, you guys took off for with sure. this, this thing, and this is, is, is this is a big thing now, and everybody's mm-hmm. looking out for this, and it's it's weighing a lot on people's opinions and things like that. So I just yes. wanted to make sure I clarify my team. I had nothing to do with what's coming out. The panel needs to be better. <laughs> so I have a group meeting, but yeah, that was good. I appreciate it. Yeah, That's and awesome. yo, I'll, before you go, I just want to say everyone should tap in with your brand. Like Veil vale Lives oh, is like yeah, one of my please. one of my favorite favorite brands, bro. Like, mm-hmm. I uh, I was wearing the propaganda polo like two days ago. So yeah, yo, I um, appreciate that, and yeah. everybody that's uh, supporting the brand. You know, Veil vale Lives on Instagram, and I you know I really appreciate that everybody's wearing it, supporting, showing love. We still coming up. Yeah, shit. Miles, Miles wore a bunch of. I want to say yeah, Miles. Year, everybody, yeah. everybody, everybody that that wore it this year, and we mm-hmm. just only going to get bigger and you know, better things is to come as well. But thank you for that. Yeah, no doubt, bro. Mm-hmm. Appreciate it, man. Peace All right. Man. Yeah, have a good day. What's going on? We have another guest for y'all. John Guidry. You may not have heard of him, but he is the ultimate fashion power player in Los Angeles. He's a publicist. He's a creative. And he runs every cool thing that you see on League Fits. He somehow played some kind of role in making it happen or whatever anyway there was few people whose opinions i trusted as much as yours john because i know you consume league fits probably almost as much as me and joe Mm -hmm. i don't i don't know if i should be ultimately proud of that (laughs) i mean living in that world but no absolutely I, i think that ultimately i have a lot of friends that are you know involved such as yourself and joe and and i you know i care about the content you guys are putting out i think I've definitely been on this for a long time in terms of kind of ahead of the curve, specifically within like a PR sense of the value in sports marketing of, of athletes and the value of what you created, you know, with League Fits. I think that it's way, it was way ahead of its time and now everyone's trying to catch up to what you guys are doing. And, um, you know, I think from that regard, I've definitely consumed a lot of it. <laughs> Yeah, well, is it true? Here, man. Is it true that you listen oh, to the podcast? Because someone that works in your house texted me and was like, "So you know, John's <laughs> at the kitchen table watching your podcast right now." Is this yeah, true? yeah, I care about you guys. Like, I, I, I genuinely like, I enjoy what you guys put out, and ultimately, it, you know, you're friends of mine, and I genuinely, if I have good feedback to give you, I'd give it. But you guys do a great job. I think you're super consistent, and I've enjoyed all the content for sure. 
Thank you so much for listening to the pod. My mom doesn't even listen to the pods. So this means a lot. <laughs> um, anyway, to provide, to provide a little context, I guess a little more details. John co-owns um, like a fashion PR agency, and basically, his I'd say your I'd say your agency BLK is like probably the most popular place for basketball stylists to pull from. So you see everything that all these guys wear, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, let's talk about your teams a little bit. Um, I'll run through it real quick and then we can just mm-hmm. kind of talk about it. You can give, you know, reasonings for your picks. You can talk about the actual results that have come out, you know, whatever. So your rookie of the year was Josh Christopher, who did win it. Your MVP was Shea. Your most improved was Miles. Your first team was Chris Paul, Devin Booker, Jordan Clarkson, Kyle Kuzma, and Shea. Your second team was Kelly Oubre, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, keeping it in the family, Patty Mills, Russell Westbrook, and Terrence Mann. And then your third team was D'Angelo Russell, Frank Jackson, Jalen Green, Josh Christopher, and Kyrie Irving. Um, so I guess like the best way to kind of open this up is like just who who stood out to you this year uh, that maybe like you didn't expect or was a personal favorite. Uh, let's just get the ball rolling on the first name that pops off that list. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, Shea Gilgis Alexander is someone that, from from my point of view, I think that there's a huge void in men's pants, and I think that <laughs> there are so many different ways you can attack, you know, this kind of ideation of league fits all stars, right? And for me, it's like there's a lot of different layers of consistency, or you know, taking risk, or doing things that are literally trend setting that are no one else is doing. And I think mm-hmm. Shay kind of hits all those things in my mind. And specifically, you know, as a consumer myself, like, I think it's really hard to find interesting, cool men's pants and no one does it better than Shay just like potentially in the entire fashion like scene, not yeah, just, agree. not just mm-hmm. leak fits, like, like legitimately in fashion global, like that guy takes a lot of risk and he's, he does it primarily by himself, which is, you know, you can't really say that about many people in the league. Yeah. Like most people have mm-hmm. support in some capacity. And for me, you know, extremely consistent, but that pant game is just on another level. Yeah. This is a pants positive podcast. Like we totally agree with you. And we thought like he also got like a little bit more versatile this year because he was on the second team last year and people were ready to burn down league fits. But I actually think he took like a massive step this year, like more colors, like more variety. But yeah, the one thing that was always the staple of like Shay was like always the dope pants. Like if I could steal anyone's pants collection, it's obviously going to be Shay. And I think both of y'all would probably agree. Yeah, I'm agree. pretty sure. Pants are important. Pants are very important. Very pretty important. sure I was one of the guys like leading the uh, charge with the pitchfork, burning this bitch down after he was second team <laughs> Although, yeah. did you guys, because the, uh, the first team was posted in between, I think, the last part of us recording this and this one. I was going through the comments and people were talking about, people were talking about Shay like, not spell, oh, Shay on the first team, that doesn't make any sense. I'm like, these, I just feel like they're just genuinely never satisfied. Yeah, it's just like, people are going to be mad no matter what. It's crazy. We also yeah. have to keep in context, like, people you know, aren't always on leaf. It's they, when, when, when they're exposed to it at their time, maybe that's the moment they're like, oh, what's this guy on a for? Yeah. Maybe they're not consuming nba tunnel content these are hashtag casuals hashtag ratio hashtag casual hashtag Hashtag get your your knowledge up yeah you know what i'm (laughs) saying they don't they don't know like me and joe or the specially curated panel how could they true to it not new to it come on now Um, you put chris paul um was one of the guys you voted for for your first team he ended up on the second team um, you had him high, but like you weren't alone there. He was like right on the cusp. Um, Chris Paul feels like a like a John, like a John John favorite. What, what yeah. do you like about him? I think there's a lot. Again, it's like so he and I are very similar in age. So mm-hmm. we kind of go. He's kind of gone through the same kind of maturation of fashion and of style. As I feel like that I've been aligned to as well. So it's like. Mm-hmm. You definitely can. And I like the fact that he diversifies. Like he can still wear some interesting younger fits and it doesn't look corny. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm from yeah. the Midwest. Like you really quickly identify whose dad is dressing like their kids and looks like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Like that's, one the, Good point. that's one of those things that like as a Midwestern person, like you just try to avoid that at all costs. But like he's done a really good job of navigating certain fits that, you know, proportionally he can get away with. And, you know, speaking of having support, like his stylist, Courtney is, is by the far goat. one of my 
people in, in the game, not just as talented as a stylist, but just as a human being, she's incredible. Mm-hmm. And I think she's done a great job to shape not only Chris, but, you know, Kevin Love, DeAndre Jordan, Mookie mm-hmm. Betts, Sue Bird. Like she's, she does some amazing things. And what's great about it is that, you know, going back to Chris is that she just, he's not a big guy. He's not like a Shay or he's not like a, nah. even Miles, like mm-hmm. she's got to find those proportions that hit him. Right. And, and, yeah. you know, he does that really well. She does. She's the goat. And all those names you listed, like all those guys were like on the ballot for this and they all dress super unique. Like none of them dress like each other. And I think that's like what makes her really special. Just to give yes. Courtney a shout out. Friend of the friend of the pod. Hashtag friend, friend of the, the pod. pod. Friend of the it. pod. Uh, um, just to piggyback, though, I had a quick question because I was as I was sitting there listening to you speak and I asked a question to one of the previous guests as far as do you take into consideration like them living the lifestyle that they dress but you specifically talked about maturation so do you take into consideration like the arc that came with like them dressing how they are now like would you like oh chris paul the improvement that he's made in the last five years i think i think we're all gonna be biased in our own ways right so it's like Mm -hmm. for me my emotional bias to chris paul is the fact that yeah i'm on the same kind of story arc and i i've enjoyed watching his maturation and his evolution Mm -hmm. of fashion and style it's like the guy wasn't wearing, you know, high waisted pants and he wasn't wearing <laughs> crop jackets last year. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like these are all things where it's like we all we all see things on leak bits. We all see things in, in the wild and, you know, in urban settings. And we're like, oh, I wonder if I can pull that off. I want to try and do that. And it's like we can't, you know, not everyone right. can do that. It takes a very skilled person or, or a really skilled tailor or a lot of trust in said tailor to get you mm-hmm. to hit those proportions right. And I think that mm-hmm. for him, he's done a really good job of hitting different proportions this season um, with, you know, different types of pants and crop jackets and that kind of like really good blend of sartorial clothing with streetwear, which mm-hmm. he's it's hard to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It never looks like his clothes are wearing him because that's something Joe and I talk about all the time. Is that you can wear something sick, but if it looks like you're like wearing a costume, it's it's like no longer cool. And Chris Paul yeah. is a guy that's never looks like he's like wearing a costume. You know, even when he wears like some like more like out there pieces, like it still like feels like pretty natural. Yeah. Um, second team, we haven't gotten to talk about him like at all in like the pods leading up to the awards or even today. Um, you put Patty Mills on your second team. I think he was on my third team when Joe and I first started making our ballot. He ended up dropping an honorable mention because we did it together. But he was someone I wanted to see get some more love. Um, dude, he he also like could have won most improved. I thought Patty Mills was sick this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think Patty is one of those guys who's always had natural swag and like he's always mm-hmm. kind of done his own thing and looked really good. Obviously, yeah. this you could tell that after the Olympics, it was important for him to make a like a bigger presence in terms of the way mm-hmm. he marketed himself and positioned himself within this world of entertainment, fashion, sports, whatever. And he partnered with a, with a really good stylist, and you can see the difference. Mm-hmm. He took another step up, um, you know. And I think it was so consistent this year. I think collectively between his own personal style, like no one really wears it's so weird that i think of things like in focus like on these little things but no one wears shorts like the dude wears shorts really well and yeah it's hard to do that as a grown-ass man yeah because you either look like a child or you look like yeah. a slop and he finds yeah. like, somehow he finds like the best shorts possible every time and then like pulls it off like mm-hmm. lebron wearing a pair of tom brown shorts with a suit jacket looked like an idiot like look yeah. like <laughs> looked like a stuffed animal kind of like toy Patty yeah. Mills, you know, he just pull, he pulls that shit off real well. It's hard. Yeah. For me. Like, that's impressive to me. Th- people that do things that, like, is hard to find and hard to locate, that's what really impresses me the most. Bro, do you want to <laughs> do you, do you turn off your ring? I don't, <laughs> I just, I just You're good. Out of it. I don't even know how to do it, to be honest. You are getting lit. Uh, it's, it's on your laptop? Yeah. Just, like, quit the iMessage application. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, you totally go, good. Bro. I mean, someone like, is lighting your shit. Is that your phone all day? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, I feel bad about texting you sometimes. I'm like, I know this. I love when you text. Like, you don't feel bad at all. Just now, don't. Now you can understand why it takes me longer to reply sometimes. Yeah, don't worry. I don't even trip. Um, okay, we were just talking about Patty. Let's resume with. All right, so John, you know, you gave us your like first team, second team, third team basketball player. Um, what would your who would be in like your MVP? Who would be your MVP stylist this year? And why is it me? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> and why is it not Ian? 
That's the, that was the second part <laughs> of the question that he didn't want to ask. I can, I can hit this in a few different ways. Rookie of the year. Maybe that's Ian. So, oh, Ooh. yeah, I'll settle. I, I'm down to settle. I'll settle. There I'll take go. that. You know, I mean, you've honestly. It's like, I don't think there was any other rookies, but I'll take it. But you know how it goes. It's like mm-hmm. sometimes it's not about the talent of the stylist. It's about the relationship with the client and the client's yeah. openness to actually take your advice that they're paying for and it's, it's like for me yeah. that was you know, coming from my background and like different aspects of fashion whether it be at tom ford or whatever it's like mm-hmm. sometimes you you know i have you're coming into a, a my space and in my environment and you're you're paying for my time and, and i'm giving you all this advice sometimes they just don't take it so like you know as from your experiences sometimes you know just more so about the fit of the people and the person's willingness to 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 do it but i mean it's there's really and i this is a tough one for me because i I love all the people that i work with but you don't have to actually answer that i was fucking with you (laughs) you don't have to answer that (laughs) no one there's no one touching alanonia right now no one that's uh to provide a little context uh he does jamal adams and russell westbrook he's just recently started doing russell Brittany hampton has been doing russell a long time and did a great job with him but i mean you know talk about people that are invested into fashion, invested into trend setting, invested into what's in the market. There's no one there. Like there's just very, very few people that are as obsessed and diehard as to what the evolution of fashion is. Mm-hmm. And, and, and like the dude would come into, even when I was a Prada, he would come into Prada and spend like an hour in there looking at everything, asking questions, taking photos, mismatching stuff, taking proportionate photos, did the same thing at Tom Ford. Like the guy, does so much research and that's why you see a difference in his outfits than anyone else yeah. because he knows what's out there mm-hmm. yeah he does it all he's market. a uh he's a good instagram follow too because he actually will post like his fit pics and then he'll include like on the last slide it'll be like a like a report card about like the dimensions and sizing and it's really it's, it's super it's super interesting it's, he's worth following on instagram for sure um speaking of like forecasting trends and I, I i hate that specific question in fashion i think it's just like at, even i get asked that i'm like bro i don't know like whatever is cool but uh obviously like your job is kind of like making sure your brands are staying relevant staying cool um let's put that in a basketball lens who do you like predicts could be like a most improved candidate next year or someone that could rise a few teams or you know uh you know yeah i mean scotty barnes was a sleeper oh i mean mm-hmm. second half of the year yeah came out Snap. of nowhere it's like again going back to how hard it is for certain people to dress the guy's like what six seven six eight yeah oh, with long arms really long arms big, like that was impressive to me he was super impressive um i'll definitely get a lot of heat for this but like low-key every now and then bull bull will wear something that i'm just like yeah hell like, yeah the jorts <laughs> outfit the jorts <laughs> outfit was the best outfit of the year Jean Shorts. D-Lo does some crazy stuff. But D-Lo I mean, was me and Joe's MVP pick. Who? Really? Oh, D- yeah, D- D-Lo. Yeah, yeah so. we love D-Lo over here. Yeah, he's so consistent. I, I, my pro- I, I don't know if mm-hmm. I have a problem with it, and you guys might hate me for this, but I feel like he kind of is a, a watered-down D-Book. No, he's better than D-Book. So, okay. I feel like you can't even water D-Book down. He's so, like super bare D-Lo's, D-Lo's outfits are way better than Devin Booker's. The cool thing, like this was the year of Devin Booker. He won MVP because he like defined like this aesthetical uniform that was super dope. But like you can't actually say that his outfit, like he's not better dressed than like, let's look at this, like the Chris Paul or Devin. All right, well, that's him. He's not better dressing Chris Paul or Jordan Clarkson or Kuz or Shea or D'Angelo Russell, but like he de- he like defines like this movement that now everybody's copying. But like, he, yeah, there's no watered down version of D Book. <laughs> yeah, I feel like D Book's hella bare. Oh, this is interesting though, because I feel like because we even it's an we interesting were about, take though. Yeah, because no, because even how we're talking about MVP and then we're thinking, oh, it has to be D'Angelo best dress. But even mm-hmm. when we're talking about we were talking to Dev a what hour or two ago and he was kind of like not really hip to it either. So maybe it's only like something like a where, only where few people D'Angelo? really notice. Where, where was D'Angelo on my on my rankings? You had him on your third, third team. team. Right? Yeah. Which like, isn't I, low. The whole thing this week has me been telling people like if you're on the third team, like you're still dumb lit. Like there's 450 yeah. dudes in the league, you're top 15. Because like all the comments are like, what? He's not first team. For sure. I I think that for me, it's like, there isn't any, like, what is the one thing that, that like 
D'Angelo is known for in your mind? Substitute uh, teacher swag and Doc Martens. Unique kind of Doc Martens, yeah. He's, he's like a cooler Frank. version of Frank Jackson, in my opinion. Like as far yeah, as yeah, I think aesthetic. like he and Frank live in the same realm. I, I think Frank Jackson is a better dresser than he is, and I think mm-hmm. that he's way more original. I mean, like that, like yeah. Rick Owens that Frank Jackson did this year was stupid. Dude, Frank is. If yeah. we were, I literally just said this earlier. But if there's any wardrobe I could steal from someone, it would be Frank Jackson's. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you a question. Who's styling Frank Jackson? Oh, Brown, see, does exactly. book, but they but they're different. You can't like it's the same like the same reason we love Courtney is because her clients dress different. Same reason I like Brown is because I don't think D'Lo and Book dress the same. They're like classy and clean, yeah. but like not I, the same aesthetic. I actually, I mean, I think Book is one of the best dressed players in the league. Like I, he's on my first team. I actually think he's better dressed. Than yeah. Just, like I, I think D Book is just listen. It's like it's one thing to like you said wear wear a fit and it like you know it kind of looks like a costume, whatever. It's like yeah. You know, if I see somebody wearing a fit like D book in public, I'm like, that's a D book fit. Yeah. That, Joe's, that's Joe's, exactly. Joe, Joe has been remodeling his closet to be yeah, just like I'm blank, blank I, reporter tees that he layers. I, I just <laughs> you know, turn box. all my, thanks to Devin Booker, I turn all my t shirts inside out because I can't, I'm not doing the graphics. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I, I mean, listen, I, I mess with it. You should really get into buying like vintage blanks and just wearing the vintage shit inside out. Like, because at least you hey, get like, we'll see. Yeah. We'll Damn. see about that. He's going to invoice you for that, Joe. That was that was not free game. <laughs> <laughs> you get an invoice in my playing. email. Fifty dollars, fifty dollars no. recommendation. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Yeah, Frank Jackson is so sick. I love Frank. Um, I think so. Mm-hmm. The question was what? Who do I think is going to be the most improved? Whatever. Frank yeah. Jackson. I think if he's not first team next year, then something went. Super he was. Fun. He was. He was for. So when I picked, because this was the first year. Because in the past, I just picked. But I was losing too many friends that way. So that's why we changed it up this year. And also, I'm obviously have like more bias than ever this year. Um, so that's why I kind of took myself out of the equation. But like when I picked last year, Frank Jackson was first team. Dude. Yeah. That, that Rick it, fit it, was unbelievable. Yeah. Ian yeah. put a lot of people on Frank Jackson. I can't even lie. So I put people on game because this is what I do. I live and breathe tunnel pictures, which is super sad, but it's reality. We all have our thing, baby. Have yeah. what's your thing? What's your thing? Oh, no, I'd rather not say. <laughs> there we go. So, hey, it is an explicit podcast. Not gonna lie to you. Yeah, it is, bro. Like this is for adult. This podcast is no, adults I mean, only. I'm a big, like, very niche sports card guy. Oh, yeah. oh, I like that. Oh yeah, yeah, that's cool. I did know that about you. Actually, one time I was at John. So John like lives where he works. Like his like the showroom, which is like what they call where PR fashion agencies are. Like he lives there. And I was there one time and he talked about sports cards and like, wh- what was uh, th- the little player? Who's the little player on the Raptors? David Stoudemire. David Stoudemire. Like you gave me the like, little player. like, a t- <laughs> yeah. Like, He's probably like, like six. His nickname is Mighty Mouse. He's five yeah, his nickname is Mighty Mouse. So it doesn't matter how tall you are. If your nickname is Mighty Mouse, you a little dude. Um, yeah. And it was like, I, I didn't realize just how interesting some like subcultures are when it comes to like sports cards and things like that. I think, um, I, think, cool. I think the past few years really opened up all those subcultures for, you know, everyone just kind of like really leaned into those old school hobbies or whatever. And it yeah. became very, which COVID I think, made being a nerd cool again. Absolutely. In every, in yeah. every, <laughs> in every category. <laughs> Cause when you're stuck at home, you can only, all there is to do is nerd out. So yeah, absolutely. I feel that. Joe, what's your thing? What is my thing? What's like, besides tunnel pictures? I mean, I play drums, so I guess we'll go with that. I like that. You should have, like, you could have like, presented right that now. better, though. You could have been like, no, because I actually genuinely had to think like, about that. I was like, what do I do? I'm, you, I'm kind of confused. It's not on what that. you do, it's like, what's your thing? Like, what, like, what, like, when you think about it, like, you got a little, like, shiver down my spine. Shiver me timbers. Like, like, w- w- like when John thinks about the Damon Stoudemire card, he's definitely like the a little, like, ooh, like a little shiver. You know what I mean? Like, what does that yeah. for you? Besides, yeah, it, it, it's definitely it's playing drums. I like that playing drums with my shirt okay. off specifically. That's nope. that's tough. That's oh, that's a better answer. Blood. Playing drums with my shirt off. There we that's go. That's tough. That's rib tough, tattoo man. on the way. Rib tattoo on the way. Man, so it I even love looks even cooler. <laughs> I love light skin Travis Barker. You the goat. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's your thing, Ian? What's your thing other than putting together tunnel, horrible outfits? I'm just kidding. Tunnel, tunnel picks. Yeah, Joe thinks I'm the worst stylist alive. 
I um, genuinely I don't, don't, but that's my new that's my new like reoccurring answer. I like outer I, just, I like I like outer space, bro. I think outer space is cool. Big that's cool. Like when I think about outer space, I'm like, ooh, what'd you say, John? Big interstellar guy. Yeah, big interstellar guy. Yeah. I like, have big, been listening like, big, to big, the... big eclipse guy. Like just watching the eclipse the other day, I was like, ooh, like oof. I have been it, listening it, to a few. It was like the first podcasts. time I saw a Frank. It, you have send me those. But yeah. When I saw the eclipse the other night, it was like the first time I saw a fire Frank Jackson outfit. You know, like long trench coat with the tie. Oh, yeah. I was like, same feeling. <laughs> nice. I was like, ooh, I felt like I discovered something. <laughs> oh god. Uh, well, yo, John, I just want to say thank you so much for hopping on today. You're one of the coolest people in in LA, and it was really cool. To, like, give a fan the chance to be a part of something. You know what I mean? So you're I ridiculous. <laughlaughs> This is the best part of your day, so I figured I'd extend the invitation. (laughs) No, I'm just fucking with you. For real, thank you so much. Your support is the best. You were meant to be on this podcast. Thank you so much, dude. I appreciate it. Special guest in the building, ladies and gentlemen, part of the League Fits panel with us today. Special guest, Richard, a.k.a. The Hop of Blonde. How are you doing today? Say his full name. Say his full name. Richard, don't know your last name. Not gonna lie to you. Okay, it's Richard. No one one needs to know. Oh, 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 my bad. I was about to dox you. I was about to dox you. He has a long last name. Don't put my government name on blast. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, we could introduce you, but you're a friend of the pod. I think everyone Mm -hmm. that has ever been on League Fits before knows who you are. We're running through some of the League Fits teams with the panel members today, and let's run through yours real quick. Um, I'm just going to read it out real quick so we can just get that out of the way. Your rookie of the year was Jalen Green. Your most improved was Miles Turner. Your MVP was Shea. Your first team was Chris Paul, Devin Booker, Jordan Clarkson, Shea, and Kuz. Your second team was D'Lo, Jalen, PJ, Jason Tatum, and Russ. Your third team was Jared Vanderbilt, Patty Mills, Kelly Oubre, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, and Thanasis Antetokounmpo. Ooh, sounds about right. Yeah. So your MVP pick, very... your MV, your MVP pick was Shay. Tell us about that. There we go. You know, I think voting was a little tough. Just mm-hmm. you know, super tough. You, know, you have you you have a bit of bias. Mm-hmm. You have people that you like. You know, what did Shay over Book, for example? Because Book was the guy that actually actually won. Though I think it was a three way tie for MVP. Book ended up getting the tiebreaker. But like, mm-hmm. uh, what was like the the one thing that made Shay like your guy? I think it's consistency and it's color as well. Yeah. Mm. I mean, like for what I do in normal life, like I hate when when like I'm shooting a celebrity and they wear black. Mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. black is just like the worst color you can wear photo wise mm-hmm. and i think with shay he uses a lot of color i mean it can be whether it's a colorful top or there's like colorful designs in the pants you know i think that's what makes an mvp is taking color into consideration not just yeah you know wearing solid colors all the time and that just makes, going with like one color palette right that makes a lot of sense too because 99 percent of like the way these basketball outfits are consumed are through photos it's like something mm-hmm. that like i know i always take in consideration is like how will this photograph and things like yeah. that so that makes a lot of sense to shay i think definitely this year even compared to years in the past he used more colors than he did because he used like a lot of like muted flannels and like graphic tees mm-hmm. and whatnot in the past. Yeah. So I think he really did upgrade that part of his game this year, like pretty significantly. Um, Agreed. So the rest of your teams, just what, what were just some names that like popped out to you, whether it was rookie of the year, most improved or just the other teams? Uh, I think, you know, going back to the whole photo aspect of it. Well, my picks are people that are visible that you always Mm -hmm. see you know whether that comes down to the players posting the fits themselves or you have like an amazing you know digital team on a team that consistently gets the fit picks because it's like why wear a fit if it's not going to be able to be seen 
Right. Mm-hmm. Me and Joe were so, talking about that because PJ ended up making the third team and we were, we've been like telling people that we we're like, yo, there just wasn't a lot of pictures of him this year. Yeah. I think like I the mean, only pictures we really saw were the ones that you took, which was, you know, that's like two or three New York yeah. trips, you know. Agreed. Um, so, I mean, obviously, you know, with CP3 and Book, you know, the Suns are like an amazing team that like consistently will always shoot them post yeah. them so and presentation it, and matters everybody exactly. presentation matters presentation and like matters. buying into like the fit culture presentation and like buying into like this like basketball fit world matters yeah exactly I and i mean that. that's why that's why you always see like my first team always on league fits because there's consistently every single game you have a fit or mm-hmm. you know if somebody wants to take it chill like you know like Kuz a couple times has done like the sweatsuit, mm-hmm. but the wizards won't shoot it that day. So yeah. you never see it, you know, but if you shoot it consistently, even with like sweatsuits, it kind of like cancels it out a little bit, in my opinion, anyway. Right. right. Only post your dumb And moves. then, exactly. Um, second team, what did I have? D'Lo, Jalen, You Russ, had D'Lo. DJ, there, was, there was two names yeah. that stuck out as a, uh, Guys that maybe didn't get a ton of love from the other voters, but got love from you and then also me and Joe. None of nobody else on the panel voted for Jared Vanderbilt and none of the fa- like he barely got any fan vote. You had him on your third team. Joe and I also had him on our second team. And then mm-hmm. D'Lo got far more love um, from this trio right here as well. Yeah. So what did you like about those two guys? I think with them, it's, I mean, you know, D'Lo and Book have the same style. And so it's, mm-hmm. it's very similar. But don't dress the same. They don't dress the same, but it's, yeah. it's con- one, it's consistent. And two, it's nothing loud. And it's nothing that you would, you know, go to a store and just like buy it off the rack necessarily. Right. I think there's a lot of time and effort, you know, with with both of them, with with D'Lo and um, Vando. It's they were consistent, and it was it was never anything loud, mm-hmm. but it was clean. It was consistent, and I think, you know, like I said, the consistency aspect of it, I think, goes really far. And D'Lo and Vando always get photos, like you always that. see. You always see the content from the Timberwolves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you can so, be. I mean, Go ahead. No, I'm I mean, the if you don't, if you cool. don't, yeah, if you don't see the photos, like, I mean, you know, you'll have the people that like only will look at league fits to see what people are wearing. But I mean, like, obviously, for us, we look at all the teams' socials as well. And if yeah. you pay attention to the Timberwolves social, one, their fit picks always turn out amazing. And they're consistently, you know, dressing up. So mm-hmm. I feel that. I have a question because I'm kind of I'm as I like sit back and listen. You're you seem to be like you're huge on like consistency, right? So mm-hmm. where do you draw the line between? Because we've we've in like the past, I'd say the past month, there's been like an overturn, and we mentioned this too in previous episodes on Devin Booker specifically. On there's like a certain sense of like oversaturation is getting boring and you're doing the same thing where do you draw the line between like someone being consistent and true to themselves and then someone like okay can we see something else now yeah wearing a uniform yeah like um i don't know the, that line is hard i think mm-hmm. i think it's i think it gets boring if it doesn't match the person's persona and personality you know, like book, he's very like reserved. He's not like loud and like he, it doesn't it wouldn't fit him, you know, like mm-hmm. if if you would change it up if it's not fitting like your personality, and I'm not saying I don't think that anything he wears is boring, so I'm not saying he's boring, mm-hmm. but I'm just saying that it's you know your aesthetic is you know chucks khakis oversized shirts and i don't see anything wrong with that because that. you know in my personal life i would wear that so, and, yeah. it, and it wouldn't feel like a uniform it just matches you it's not 
like you know you ha- you have this reserved persona but you're gonna wear like you know pieces with like logos and branding and like all these prints and I think I think I like what he wears just because I'm kind of the same I'm not someone that does prints and brands and everything Mm -hmm. like I would rather just wear like solid pants or like a solid color shirt I feel that me and Joe are the same way not a big graphic t people or whatnot um but I think with the mm -hmm. uh I was going to say with the consistency aspect, it's about consistently having an aesthetic, not just consistently, you know, not, it's not consistently just dressing up. It's about consistently having an aesthetic. And just right. staying true to yourself is what I'm hearing. Like if you're true exactly. to yourself through mm-hmm. and through, you're, you're solid. That's what exactly. me and Joe say is like the reason that like Devin Booker was like so noteworthy this year was like he built an aesthetic. He didn't like he, yeah. he wasn't putting on Kyle Kuzma outfits. You know what I mean? Or Shea or Jordan. Yeah. Like you can't argue that he dresses better than any of those guys. But like yeah. the aesthetic he built was like so yeah. defined. And that's what made Devin Booker super cool this year. Um, yeah. So I feel that you you kind of have a unique perspective because you were like around these guys. You were in the trenches shooting like almost every day it felt like um if you had to make like a team of like your favorite guys to photograph who would what would that that look like yeah uh my first team that's probably why i voted them there we go sense that makes sense (laughs) yeah talk to them that's a good one I i mean everybody everybody on this list i mean i if i'm like looking at it you know, there's a couple guys that, like, obviously I didn't see as much. And obviously now I don't see Patty because he plays in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I mean, first team, that's the guys that, you know, want to be photographed. They want the photos to turn out really well. So in I'm going to stop you real quick, just so everyone knows. Yeah. The first team, as a reminder, was Chris Paul, Devin Booker, Jordan Clarkson, Shea, and Kuz. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they're the ones that want to be photographed. They're the ones that, you know, put the effort into what they're wearing. So they make it a lot easier for me to shoot it. You know, they they make sure that nobody's in the way. They make sure that, you know, you know I'm out there. You know I'm going to shoot mm-hmm. it. So, you know, mm-hmm. whether it's, you know, if I'm shooting at an angle, just even looking for like a brief second this way to get the shot. Like things always are easy you know when i shoot them you know there's people that and teams that are a bit harder to shoot i'm not gonna say any but you know (laughs) know. i've never (laughs) i I, yeah i've never had any issues with with these guys it's always been super seamless super easy and i that's personally why i enjoy doing it that's what's up Mm -hmm. it's so interesting talking to like everyone on the panel and like hearing their different reasonings and like all the reasonings are like super valid i messed with that yeah um you picked jalen green for your rookie of the year i did i mean i like i like what he wears it's it's a good start Mm -hmm. to you know if you want to be a fashion guy it's a good start Mm -hmm. to make it in and and at the same time there weren't many like you know, options to choose from. <laughs> in my opinion, I hear, anyway. I hear that. I hear that. Two-thirds Ironically, of the played on the same team, so it's facts. Probably, yeah. That is true. It's funny. The usually you would think like the rookies would always be like the strongest each year because like yeah. kids are cooler than old people. Um, yeah. But like the rookie class, and I think this was probably the strongest league fits rookie class ever, and it was still pretty thin. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it's it interesting. Like it turns out, like teenagers like usually don't have good taste. Who would have thought? Yeah. Um. But yeah, this was like a really strong rookie class, and I think it was probably like what would you say, Joe? Like three guys, three really strong guys: J- Jalen, Josh, and then David. Yeah. If you you want to say really strong, yeah, contenders. Yeah. Three contenders. Mm-hmm. Three contenders. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Well, yo, I just want to say thank you. Not just for coming on the pod, but for making League Fit such a better place this year. There we go. Give him the <laughs> no flowers while he's still here. 
There we go. Whoa, what the hell, Joe? He's not dying. I'm not he's, dying. Not, he's not leaving the pod and going to the ICU. What are we doing here? I'm just saying, I'm just saying, man. Oh, well, he's no, like, now, now, now I'm saying. You know, now I can just take a break because <laughs> now that my Bucks and my sons got eliminated, oh, I don't really man. care who wins at the end of the day. It's all right. Oh, well, it's I'm, 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 I'm take a break. I, I'm, I'm, this, I, I'm the exact same way. But shit, I'll see you and Mikanos, my boy. There we go. <laughs> I'm Mikanos. <laughs> <laughs> Cue the Lindsay uh, Lohan dance and Mikanos. What? Say what? Cue the Lindsay Lohan dance and Mikanos. Have Dude, you never on. seen the Lindsay? No, I, I, I'll, I'll send it to you. Okay, put me on game. It, 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 it's the Rich- it's the it's the it's the epitome of of. Say no more, Richard. Yes. Like puts me on game for like every cultural, pop, celebrity <laughs> reference ever, and that's mm-hmm. a beautiful thing that you need in your friend circle. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for coming on, Brody. Whole squad no the problem. Anytime. Our first team this Peace. season. Go follow Survival of the Fitted wherever you get your podcast. Tell them that Intern Joe sent you. Click the follow button. Go follow Survival of the Fitted.